One of the biggest updates in Marvel Snap's history is now here. We're talking about the Spotlight Cache system, which has just launched within minutes here on Marvel Snap. And you can see here that the UI has been changed so that we know what is available for us. Uh, for me, it is the Spotlight Cache um, variants because I do own all these cards. I want to go after this Jean Grey, the Mystery Series 4 and 5, which we're going to be going into great detail as well. There's also a change in the shop as well, which provides you with a daily offer to ensure that like, if you buy tons of variants, which I think is pretty damn expensive, you can get a premium mystery variant in addition to some tokens. But before we get into that and we dive into the Spotlight Cash system, this video here, I'm going to do a bit of a yes. We're going to go into a PowerPoint because I want to talk about some of the ways that you can engage and min-max with this system. And then we're going to finish the video by actually opening up some Spotlight Caches, getting those four reserves and seeing how they work. Let's get started. So the first thing to know about the Spotlight Cash system is it's the biggest update to Marvel Snap to date. Uh, it completely revamps the uh, collection system it vastly improves the opportunity for the average player to collect more cards but most importantly it is a new way to unlock weekly new releases every single week including big bads as they're rotated in and it's live right now uh, as a quick explanation as to how it generally works every spotlight cache as explained actually shown right here as well spotlight caches have four individual things in it you have the actual Jean Grey Null Tribunal and the Mystery 4 5 variant. Now, the way it works is that you have a 25% chance per spotlight cash. As you can see, we have the spotlight caches and then collector's reserves. Uh, you have a 25% chance to pull either one of these, okay? If you already own the card, the card is replaced with the variant, which is why you see I have the variants and not the cards themselves, okay? Once you pull one thing out, um, it doesn't reshuffle. It remains the, like, the, the box only, the crate, sorry, has four things in it. When you pull one out, it stays at three. So then now you have a 33% chance to pull the next thing. And then as you continue going, it turns one to 50. And then finally, on your fourth pull of a collector's reserve, you have a 100% chance to pull that last item. And then when it's done, you basically get the variants repopulated in, okay? So you only get the variants if you don't own the card. So that's an important thing. It's also worth noting here that this 25% uh, chance is a random series four or five card. And that means across all the spectrum, including dupes, which means that if you get a duplicate, you get a premium mystery variant of that card. It's not necessarily a new card. So there's new du no duplicate protection there. Let's talk about some essential details here. Uh, you get collection level every, uh, sorry, you start seeing them after collection level 500. You get them once every 120 collection level, which is essentially 1 in 10. Um, they're defined on a pre-week basis and uh, can include a newly released card and will include a newly released card. If you own the card already, you get the spotlight variant and they're announced at the start of the season, okay? And season pass cards, and this is important, the season pass cards are added to the spotlight caches approximately 6 to 12 weeks after the season ends. So Second Dinner has made some some uh, some strides to ensure that the premium battle pass is kind of like protected to some extent. Uh, it still represents one of the best values for your dollar in Marvel Snap. Like if you're going to spend any money on Marvel Snap, the season pass is the best purchase you can make per month. Uh, Ten bucks is not nothing, but it's uh, it's definitely going to provide you with the most value overall. Now, when we talk about the actual weekly releases, we're talking about uh, this is what's been announced thus far. So basically, the week of July 11th, we have Jean Grey, Null, and Living Tribunal. What's interesting thing about this is that Jean Grey is obviously a very sought-after card. Null is a fantastic card. Tribunal is hot trash. But you're kind of going to expect this, right? You're going to expect this mix and mash of different things. Um, but knowing in advance which cards are available is huge because, for instance, uh, the starting on the 8th of July, you have Echo, which seems to be a pretty good card. Not as good as Jean Grey or Mirage, in my opinion, but like a middling card. An amazing card in Iron Lad and kind of a poo-poo card in Kang, but still a big bad. A card that you probably would not have ever pulled in the regular system then you have obviously a legion high evolutionary which is a huge card if you listen if you didn't have the six thousand tokens for high evolutionary on the launch this is a huge one as well legion's a bit of a meme but dark hawk and high evolutionary are literally two of the best cards in the game uh despite any changes happening to high evolutionary and then, of course, you have the Mirage and Thanos combo. Mold I like, but this is huge too. I think Mirage is going to be a great card, and I think Thanos is literally one of the best purchases you can make in Marvel Snap. So, knowing this in advance, you should be very strategic with your token spending and also with how you open your reserves. Because, listen, if, if you're someone who wants Jean Grey, if I open this Spotlight Cache, which we're going to do at the end of the video, we're going to open the four at the end of the video. If you open the Spotlight Cache, and it's Jean Grey, just hold the rest of your reserves because you've 25%ed uh, you know, the card you want. So there's some variation here because if you get the card you want, 
then you can just stop opening reserves and you only spent 120 collection level and now you're carrying the next over for the next week, which I think is going to be particularly valuable for some people. So these are the variants up close, so you couldn't really see in the small little screenshot there. But as you can see, these are like really nice variants. They haven't announced or shown the new ones coming for the future weeks. I would have liked to have seen that. But Living Tribunal, yes, the card sucks. But this is an amazing variant. This Jean Grey is insane. Like I bought Jean Grey just so I can unlock this easier. And this Null's fantastic too. Like these are beautiful, beautiful variants. Um, let's take some important notes here about how these spotlight caches work. First of all, 40 caches will guarantee that you get any particular card. Cause as I said, there's a increasing chance because of the reduction in the number of cards in the cache that you basically pull the card you want. So 25% chance on that first pull to get that new card for the week. Then it turns into 33, 50, and then hundred finally. And then one worth thing worth noting is that the random series four or five card is not just any of them. There's an approximately 33% chance to pull a series five in comparison to a series four. It's still an improvement over before. I put a question mark here because it was an answer from like, it wasn't like an official, like Glenn didn't say this, but it was like kind of, it was a, it was a Q and a thing that was asked. And then someone said it's approximately 33%, but don't quote me. So I'm kind of like half quoting here, I guess. So long story short, Take this with a grain of salt. The numbers have not actually been revealed, but it is our current understanding that there's a slightly reduced chance to pull a series five card in that random one and a uh, increased chance for a series four. But again, those numbers have not been fully detailed officially. Um, Random series four or five card can mean any series four or five card, not just the ones you don't own. There is no duplicate protection. This is huge. But if you pull a card you own, you get a premium mystery variant instead, which is not, not a pixel guaranteed to be either a 700 gold non-pixel variant or a 1200 gold regular pixel variant. I don't know if there's a percentage split on that. Now, with regards to that specific note, I just want to give you a little, ba a little bit of backup and some clarity because I think that that's going to be a little confusing for some players and that due protection is not consistent with the way Marvel Snap has worked in the past. I think a lot of people are going to be taken off guard by that. So let's take a look here. So this is an example here from Tucker giving a question. Someone asked the question and basically said that at the bottom, here's some fine print, random series four and five works like booster packs and other CCGs. Dupes are possible. If you roll a dupe, it turns into a premium mystery variant instead. Okay, so again, this is the official response. So I think that some people might get cut off guard with that. Let's talk about the math here quickly on resources, tokens, and gold. Now, token acquisition has been greatly reduced. Gold has been removed from the collection track altogether, which is somewhat problematic. We have the weekend missions, though. But the problem with the weekend missions, honestly, is that, uh, I mean, I hate to say it. I don't like the win condition, like the Patriot win 15 games. I'd rather it be like play Patriot in 15 games. But, I mean, the gold's there. 150 gold, it's there, and it kind of offsets the removal from the collection track. And then you have the uh, the credit acquisition. Seems like it's slightly improved. You're getting a slightly more credits. It's not like a huge improvement, but uh, that just means you're moving up the collection track a little faster, which helps with the actual spotlight caches themselves. Here's some math with the resources, okay? So the free-to-play player should be getting about 6,600 credits per week. With that being said, what that means is that per week you're getting about 6,000 and then each collection spotlight cash is approximately uh, 5,900 credits because you're going 120 collection level. And then four of them are going to be 480, which is about 23,600 credits. So my initial math would say that like a free-to-play player can pull one spotlight cash per week, which is still a wild improvement over the prior, but per week you're not going to be able to get all four, right? So if you if you want all four cards... You're going to have to like strategically save your caches and save your credits to pool them for future weeks. So I think the planning element is going to be important. It's also worth noting that you can really low roll on the random series five and four drop because there's a 25% chance of a dupe. Uh, not sorry, there's a 25% chance that you pull the series four or five card, but it can be a duplicate. So if you pull that duplicate, then that means you're not getting a new card that week, which I think is a pretty rough thing. And the problem is, you know there's going to be on someone on Reddit in a month's time who's going to low roll four of these random Series 4 or 5 drops in four consecutive weeks as a free-to-play player, which is going to be infuriating, right? So I think that this might be one of the more tilting elements. I don't think people realized that it's a, a there's a dupe 
uh, kind of potential in there. And I think that could be somewhat problematic. Here are the graphics to illustrate how the tokens are being done. Essentially, what you're looking at here is, uh, you know, in our old system for Series 3 Complete, you're getting about 5,000 tokens. Now you're getting about 800. The credits uh, are remaining roughly the same, but my math indicated that we're actually getting slightly more. So I think there's uh, you know, a little bit of uh, math movement here and the, the newest iteration. But regardless, it's an improvement, which is good. We're going to be getting more cards, but I think that there's some things that we need to like really pay attention to with regards to the strategy to make sure that you unlock the best, uh, the most cards possible. Now, strategically, I think it's super important that you actually not hoard caches, but you save caches for the weeks that you really want to target, okay? 40 collector reserves guarantees all the rewards. It's a lot though, it's 480 collection level, but it guarantees you get all the cards. Like for instance, in the, this week here, if you know you want, and you probably don't want Legion, but if you know you want High Evo and Darkhawk, you know, you're gonna want to save 40 collection reserves. And if you pull Darkhawk High Evo, then carry the rest to the next week. Do not just blow them on Legion if you don't want Legion. So I think that the very strategic use of your caches is going to be huge, okay? There's some luck here. If you pull, if you high roll Jean Grey on, week, on the first week, and then you're like, you know what, do I go after Null? It's a 50-50. It's, a it's literally, a, it's actually 33. 33% <laughs> chance to get that Null. Do you roll it, right? 25% chance to get what you want. It's still gambling a little bit, but I think being very cognizant of how you should be targeting weeks is super important, okay? Tokens are super scarce as well. It's now my opinion, and this is my opinion, that you should not be spending your tokens on Series 5 cards. If you're going to be spending tokens, you should be spending them on Series 4 cards, and not something like Stegron, it's just a picture of my shop, but like if you have a Series 4 card that's a newly released card, and it's also accompanying a, another card that you want to get, what you should be doing is like doing the caches, and then if the week's ending, and you haven't pulled that card... I mean, if you don't have any caches left, you could consider spending those credits or spending the, the tokens to pick up the card you want. But I think that buying a Series 5 card is greatly reduced in value. It's literally two for one. You get two Series 4 for five. That's obvious math. But it's, it's worth just putting in your head like, okay, how you interact with the cash system and your tokens is super valuable. You're barely getting tokens now, okay? So being able to like just straight up pick something from the shop is going to be much more difficult and it's going to be much more um let's say heartbreaking if you pick something and then it's not really what you want right so i think being very strategic with your tokens is very important finally i think it's always important to note that because you want to unlock as much collection level as possible in this new system you want to be upgrading cards and with that being said you want to make sure all your common cards are uncommon this is something a lot of people don't realize and it blows my mind it comes up on my stream every once in a while where people don't realize that your first le upgrade moving from a common, which is a gray border, to an uncommon is actually only 25 credits per collection level. Every other upgrade, when you go to infinite, when you go to rare or whatever it is, is 50 credits per collection level. So if you have a whole bunch of uncommons like I do because I'm an idiot, you have to actually upgrade these to maximize your opportunity to rise in collection level. It's just, it's, it's free real estate, literally, because you're, you're saving half the amount of credits just by upgrading your commons. This is something that a lot of people don't realize, and I think you need to be maximizing. You can best do this by actually going to your sort menu, go to quality, and then kind of like hit whatever, this is ascending, descending, I don't know. And then it'll give you an opportunity to sort by the actual collection level, uh, collection uh, rarity, and you're going to see all your commons, okay? So with that being said, let's actually jump back to the game here, and let's crack some caches okay we're gonna go through we're gonna unlock everything here to see how it runs here even though they're just variants for me first spotlight cache what do we got and it's the gene grade variant it's exactly what i wanted so if i was just not making a video right now i would stop here because this is exactly what i wanted and um i should not like I, the null and the tri dark tribunal are fine but because we're making content here and you guys want to see what's up let's keep going okay hey Bronze rank pride. That's literally that is literally me. That's my new title for uh, for now on. Okay, baby Chavez, not bad. Okay, we're getting new variants. That's not bad. Uh, so these are the new reserves here, by the way. So we got 150 credits. So you're getting an idea of what like your okay credits. I'll take them. By the way, I had like hundreds saved up. So 250. Where's our next spotlight cash? Okay, 100 collector reserves. 50 collectors tokens. Big sad. Big sad there. Okay, new avatar Quinjet. Not bad. All right. All right. I'll take that variant all day long. That's a nice one. You know, I'm going to favorite it as well. Let's go. Okay, two variants and another spotlight cache. So now, 33% chance. And they do a good job of actually illustrating, um, you know, what is available still. So it's a 33% chance here. We hit it. What do we get? 
It's the null. And it's my favorite. Um, we're going to keep going. I really just want to hit this 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 thing here, honestly. I, I could care less about Living Tribunal. But let's keep opening some caches here. All right. This is not that exciting here so far. I mean, this is just... This is the problem, though. This was what the problem... The original problem with the collection system was. You just open these caches. You save so much for them. 50, yeah, getting 50 collector's tokens feels horrible. Oh, maybe that's my actual new title. Let's get our next spotlight cache here. Come on. Come on. Okay, here it is. Spotlight cache. Ready to go? Let's go. Give me that random. Let's see what hit what we get hit with. <laughs> okay, so I get the Living Tribunal here. I'll favorite it. I really just want this right. See, this is the problem. So theoretically, if you're a free-to-play player, this is the high roll. You dodge. You dodge the uh, potential duplicate, right? But for me, for the content, I wanted to see what I got. Like, I want... I kind of want to see if I get a duplicate. Honestly, that's a good, uh, that's a good apocalypse. Honestly, um, but like I kind of wanted to see like what would happen, what card I would get, what the duplicate would look like. Right, that was the actual science I wanted to pull here. So we're opening more here. Finally, we're going to be approaching a collector's spotlight cache next, and here it is, spotlight cache, the last one of the week. I got nothing else. Actually, if we keep opening them, by the way, they're just premium mystery variants, which I'm not going to do. We're going to save them. Let's see our random. Okay. So I hit no. I was confused for a second. I'm like, yo, that's literally the base card. But it says convert here. I didn't realize at first. I was like so confused. Again, first, this is like live. I First time I recorded this. So um, already owned. Convert it. And we convert it to a random mist. This is so painful. I just got... What? It's not even... It's a forge? Okay. So it's a... Okay, now I understand. I got null, but I didn't get the null premium mystery variant. I got a random premium mystery variant. It happens to be forge. Okay. I totally understand. So I already had the card, and now I get the forge. All right. I don't know. I think this is going to tilt people out. I think this is going to tilt people up, but still, okay, we tested it, we see how it works, and we get it. And that means, my friends, you can watch the next Marvel Snap video here. What I got here is I got linked the uh, the Snapchat. It's one of our favorite series we do. Uh, it's a it's a, um, a podcast I do with Cozy Snap, and in this episode, I'm actually with Mold. So you can check it out if you're interested. But regardless, guys, thank you so much for all your support of my content. Hit the like button if you like to support the series, and we'll see you in that next Marvel Snap video.